Hi, everyone. I'm joined today by Alistair Smith from Print and Mail Runner. I thought this would be a really interesting video to show you because I think everyone talks about digital in this digital world. So to maybe see what other options are available for our marketing and why important, maybe traditional marketing. Um, but rather than listen to me, let's hear from, from Alistair. Thanks very much for joining me, Alistair. No problem at all. Hi everybody, uh, my name's Al and uh, I run a company called Print and Mail Runner and uh, we do what we do for the love of print and mail and uh, that is all, all things print related from standard business stationery, business cards, letterheads etc to marketing collateral uh, which can include brochures, leaflets, um, pull-up banners like the one behind me uh, and exhibition stands and that kind of thing so it's very much uh, a physical product uh, we also manage direct mail campaigns uh, from print to post as uh, as well. So I've uh, been running the business for just over 10 years now and, uh, and it's going well. Okay, brilliant. Oh, well, thanks for the introduction. That's really sort of helps kind of a huge remit of products and services that you're obviously offering. So let's start with the, the basic, you know, people say, oh, it's all about digital marketing. You know, does print have a place still, you know, that traditional physical product? Yeah, well, I think we can go back to, uh, we would just take one example, and that's Kindle. Kindles, when Kindle came out, they said, that's going to be the end of books. Nobody's going to ever buy a book again. Why should they? They can get uh, thousands on one small little device. And uh, what's in the reality is, is book sales are still, uh, to, well, they're, they're higher than they have uh, ever have been and, uh, and continue to be uh, a very um well, a, a very relevant product, like you know yourself, Justin. You actually wrote a book, and yes. uh, one that I bought, and I bought the physical, uh, the physical item, and it's on my uh, bookshelf here. So yeah, they said that print was going to be dead uh, when email came along and the internet came along, but uh, that's very, very much not been the case. Um, yeah, so yeah, we still, we still here. Okay, that's good to hear. It's good to hear. So, I mean, obviously, when you're thinking about your marketing plan, um, people have obviously been so focused on doing digital marketing. Where where do you think print marketing works the best? Well, print marketing works the best uh, in combination with other marketing means. So I'm not saying that uh, it's not just one strand uh, is 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 the best or one strand is the only thing you should be doing what you should be doing is complementing uh different marketing uh, um um marketing uh, projects that you might take on and so you may send out an email to uh, your database but you might want to back that up with sending um a piece of personal direct mail as well something physical that comes uh, that that they can crab in their hands it's a bit has a bit of uh you know it's a, it's tactile and it has stickability so it's unlike an email something electronic which will just be sent out and if it's not if really if it's not acted on in the moment it suddenly becomes forgotten forgotten about that's not the case with a piece of physical uh print uh, be it a leaflet um or, or or a letter a brochure or a booklet it has stickability have you got? I mean, have you got any tips how people can track the the success of physical marketing? So, if it's a leaflet, a brochure, or a piece of direct mail, how how can people track whether that's working for them? Uh, the simplest way is to make it very clear uh, a call to action. So, if you want something, if you're producing a piece of uh, of direct mail or a or a leaflet. Um, and it's to promote um, product, an event, or something that uh, um, something else. Then you're, you're you're very clear on on that piece of uh, marketing collateral exactly what you want somebody to do, how they want, what simple as, as possible, what steps you want somebody to take um, on receiving or reading your 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 marketing. Uh, so that might be to visit a landing site. It may be to pick up the phone and call you. And what we we tend to do is put on um, little um, code numbers to say, you know, if you if you if you respond into this this leaflet or this 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 advert or this marketing piece, then that uh, phone up or um, go to a website and you've got you've got a code number there, and then you're tracking them so you can you know which pieces which p particular piece of marketing um, is working. And I would That's say you would do that across the board for anything that you did. 
That's a really, I mean, that's a great piece of advice. Uh, having a landing page that is specific to to that that campaign, obviously, it, it suddenly means that the world of Google Analytics and things like that, we can obviously track what what's coming up, uh, about. I suppose from kind of direct, di- yeah, kind of any direct mail campaign that you might be doing or physical products. So yes, that's a that's a great piece of advice. Thank you. Um, sort of in terms of you know. Does getting something designed to print is is that is that a complex process? Um, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. That's uh, the thing about design is that uh, what we're trying to do is get somebody's that uh, somebody's idea that they've got in their head put on a uh, on, on a leaflet or a banner or whatever it is that you you, know, you want printing. Um, and so the thing about design is design costs because you're paying for somebody's time and that is the designer's time uh, to a professional that uh, that's 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 you know knows what they're doing uh, but what they want to do is receive as detailed a specification as possible uh, maybe we've backed up with uh, with images or links or logos and that kind of thing so what what then happens is they can put down a uh, uh, a first draft proof and send it out and then that can then be um tweaked and amended uh, as as required but the most important thing is, is to providing it as detailed a um uh, specification as you possibly can because that reduces the time for, for for the designer i think that's great advice i mean i know from my own experience if you don't give a decent brief the designer comes back with something and says oh my god uh, you know, it's a bit of a shock when you get to see it. Yeah. Um, what about design when it comes to these, you know, online tools? Is it, you know, like Canva? That's a buzz mm-hmm. kind of phrase, an application that's being talked about all of the time. I mean, can we produce something on Canva and then send it over to you to be produced? Is that will that yes. work? It, the simple answer is yes. The thing is about about print and, and something like Canva, which is which is a great product, um, absolutely great product. But but print print has its own particular way of 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 taking artwork and producing a, a finished piece, a finished leaflet or or letterhead or uh, brochures, booklet, uh, banner, etc. And one of the things is, and this is a bit, this is going to be a bit of jargon, is bleed and crop marks. Now bleed. Basically, that what means that means is is that you need your background that uh, whatever is in the background to to extend off the, the finished size of a particular piece of print. Now, I know that it, sometimes it's a bit complicated to uh, to explain it, um, but sometimes with Canva, that those are a little bit of uh, of technical things that don't quite work. And so, perhaps getting something designed in Canva is fine, but it might just need to be tweaked, ready for printing. Okay. bleed crop marks there so if it we're is. doing ourselves you know um yeah. so kind of someone doing it themselves you must have seen it they've done it themselves and they've used a professional designer you know there's two different aspects to this um is it obvious when someone's done it themselves versus a professional designer it, it's I, I think you could say that sometimes you can see <laughs> Yes, is probably the answer. Yes, is probably the answer. Yeah, that uh, because uh, the designer, professional designer, just has m- many more tools available to them, and and they've got experience. Somebody coming at it cold um, is doing it. That uh, that's that's a one off, and they're they're doing it outside their their normal job or their yeah the uh, the normal comfort zone. And so that um, sometimes they can only take it so far. But with a, a professional designer. That's what they're doing all day, every day. So uh, I would like to think that you would definitely see a difference between homemade and professional. I don't know whether you'll know the answer to this, but, you know, when someone's had it done professionally versus, you know, uh, done it themselves, it, do they get better results when it's been done professionally? Is... Uh, that's a, that, that is a difficult one to answer because that, that would depend on... Uh, You've got the physical piece of uh, of artwork or the physical piece of uh, collateral leaflet, etc. Uh, so, but it depends on that uh, how relevant that offering is, or that product, or that 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 jumble sale, or whatever it is, to the person that's actually received it. So, it could be the best design thing in the in the world, but if it's given to the wrong person at the wrong time, then it's never going to happen. It's never going to work. 
So it is it is a combination of a, of a few different things make any marketing campaign or any uh, um, piece of marketing collateral that's a um, that's a better than another. So when we're developing marketing collateral and getting something designed, we're going to get it printed and everything like that. Talk to me about calls to action. Are there what what yeah. works really well as a call to action? Is there a best practice for it? Um, best practice is to mention a call to action that uh, as many times as you can within a, within a uh, without going overboard, but that uh, certainly uh, I would say a magic three that uh, so you want. To, so when somebody sees something and they they want to respond to it, the steps for that response are very very clear. And I think that 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 is the thing. And to be repeated. So you maybe put it in the top part, then maybe in the bo- body, and then certainly at the at, at at the bottom as well. So what you're doing is you're just emphasising. Um, people don't like um, they like to feel comfortable. With what they're doing, and certainly if it's something new that uh, they they want to feel comfortable, so they want to know uh, what they're letting themselves in for, and basically what they're you know what they're getting. That's very interesting. You mentioned the power of three, and actually, um, people un- don't sometimes understand how to buy the product. I think that's Ooh. you know actually it's all very well having a call to action, but actually, what are you going to get? Uh, I yeah. think that's a fantastic piece of advice to to get, <laughs> to to give about it as well. Um, so just kind of moving on, um, you know, one of the things you mentioned before was about direct mail. You know, let's let's say you know we're not getting great responses from an email campaign, and we think, well, we're going to use a physical direct mail campaign. Um, what what do what do you mean by that? Is that is that just a, a normal letter, or is it something a bit better than that? It can be uh, uh, direct mail or direct marketing uh, to, uh, can cover uh, different things. So it could be direct marketing could be uh, as simple as you getting your uh, uh, the pizza menu through for, through your letterbox. So it's totally that uh, it's just it's just blanket across your area. And, uh, it doesn't have any personalization. It's not specific to you. It's just telling you there's a there's a there's a local pizza restaurant and uh, they have specials on Thursday. So that's one thing. Uh, but then others, you get something that's highly targeted and it's going out to a, a database of people. So this is a company or a business that has their own in-house database that they've built up over a, a number of years. Or they may have bought in from a from a from a, a, a list provider, and they are sending something that's targeted and personalised. I'm just going. Just going to, we've just done one for Tyndale Hospice at Home, so okay. we send out their their newsletter, so that goes out. But on alongside that, we also have some raffle tickets, which mm-hmm. are personalised, mm-hmm. and then a personalised cover letter, okay. and all that gets matched together. And put in a path and uh, and and sent out. So it can be, it can be as simple as a, as as a leaflet through the door, or it could be something as uh, as complex as uh, as receiving a very targeted piece of mail. Okay, and I, I presume all of these aren't going to just arrive in separate boxes at say my office, and I've got to put them all into an envelope and stick all the addresses on. I presume that's not the case. No, that's uh, that, no, we we we, we provide we we provide a managed um, end-to-end what we call print to post so that uh, so from uh, we could go from from the design side as well so we would just we work through with our customers and our clients and we put together that uh, every part of the campaign uh, and then we, we we make sure it's it's sent out uh, via the most cost-effective method usually via a roll mail okay and uh, do, do you get any form of discount from royal mail because it's very expensive nowadays to to post it is it is that uh, yes so royal mail offer um professional mailing houses like ourselves that um uh, what they call um ad mail discounts so basically what that is is that uh, because we're sending a lot we get you get you get reduced uh, uh, reduced prices on, on on the cost of a normal uh, um, second class or first class stamp okay and it, and it depends on volume it's volume yes, it's, uh, related I, su- I suppose what is the minimum and what is the maximum when we're sending something out in the post okay that's uh well if there isn't any minimum um but that uh the, the discounts really start kicking in 
over 4,000 items. And that's 4,000 items that are going to be sent to a, a national spread or uh, two and a half thousand if they're just going to be in a in a in a, in a region sort of like um, the northeast or the NE postcode, then that's two and a half thousand. Okay, that's a, it's good to know what what we're, yeah. kind of numbers we're playing with. So just to move the the tack, tack on slightly onto something else, um, I work with loads of new businesses, startup businesses, all of that sort of stuff. You know, budgets really really tight. Um, quite often they haven't really thought about their logo design and getting some business cards done and all of these kind of things. You know, where where does a business start? You know, what what's the kind of, is there any top tips that you've got in terms of getting something that's going to look professional? How much does it cost? You know, what, what do you yeah, think? That, that, that is a... Um... It's a good question, but it's it's not the easiest one to answer because every business or every person is 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 an individual, and and their businesses and they might be, uh, they're all going to be different and need different things. Um, just thinking about the last couple of people that we've ones we've done. What one was for a um a local building company, mm. uh, and they were set, setting up a, a new. A roof inside. So what they wanted basically is a, a leaflet designed that was going to promote their um their roofing services we've had it done and then that was distributed that uh across the geographical area pushed through people's doors so that was really simple then we have others that uh have a um a hairdressers that's been done new shop so what they wanted they wanted business cards they also wanted appointment cards they wanted a pull-up banner to go in the in the window just advertising things um, and then also leaflets as well that were and, and priceless that were given. So it is it it de- it really depends on uh, on what people want. And and it is what we try to say with 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 print now. Although you do get economies of scale with things like um, business cards or or, or leaflets etc. Um, with digitally printed these days, you don't have to buy boxes and boxes. You shouldn't have. Uh, <laughs> 10 boxes of leaflets in your cupboard under the stairs six months after you've ordered them you know you need to be we need to be moving them through so you mentioned something there about digital print um what so what what what's the difference between digital print and normal print normal print or has it been the traditional is called litho print and Mm. basically that is setting it up setting printing on big sheets that um so all, all up on on big sheets and it's a very traditional printing method that i'm um, going back back years and then you print on the big sheets and it takes quite a bit of setting up you have to set what's called plates although they're not physically plates anymore um and it tends to be a more um a, a, a longer it takes longer to set up so that um, it's ideal for longer print runs hmm. because okay. the cost per item once you've set it up is 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 quite low so it's great if you're doing uh, a, a, a lot but if you only want a few and i would say probably up to up to 500 is a few then digitally printing uh, is much better and that basically is just uh, a pumped up your your your, desk, your 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 office printer it's like a pumped up one of those but can you know print on that uh, is it's professionally done and that uh, and it's done but it, it can handle it's very it doesn't need much setting up um mm-hmm. to do it it will work straight off a um um uh off a pc or a, or, or a computer and um, so it's ideal for shorter rooms the cost I mean, per item might be slightly higher but it is better okay. So, I mean, you did me some beautiful bookmarks for my book. Um, they were absolutely lovely. Were, were they just out of interest? Were they digitally printed or lithographically? Digitally printed. I mean, so I, I mean, I, I, I didn't know how you'd produce those. I didn't look terribly closely. I, I mean, they were absolutely fantastic. So, I, you know, I can attest to the quality of of digital printing. I suppose. Um, so, I suppose a million dollar question is, you know, someone's looking to um, work. You know, get get some design work done. Got a new business, say they're, they're wanting some stuff printed. You know, why why would they be coming to you in particular? Is there a big difference between the the different printers in the marketplace? Why 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 you? 
not really. That um, it, uh, print is print at the, at the end of the day. That uh, and it is that uh, the quality of print is uh, is 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 pretty much the same across that uh, that across the board. Uh, the 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 machines that they have these days and the setup are all pretty much uh, uh, the same. So you would think that the, the the outcome, once you get it, whether you use printer mail or not or any another printer, is all pretty much going to be the same. And I'd like to think it would be it would be good quality. Uh, where we stand uh, uh, a bit separate is that we provide a, a personal service. It's all been about the personal service. So it's it's about talking to our customers, our clients, which is had many of them for, for many years uh, about specifically what it is that they want uh, we're also one point of contact as well so that uh, regardless of what it is that you that you require uh, you're just dealing with one person and the same person and it is it is going to be competitive it might not be the cheapest in the market mm -hmm. but it's going to be competitively priced um, and we also we also offer a um a, like a hundred percent satisfaction guarantee if you like what that specifically means is, is that uh, unlike some of the other online uh, print companies, you don't actually pay for your stuff from us until you've received it, you've opened the box, and you're happy with it. So, but, uh, so you're always in control, which we think is a very important thing. Okay, that's interesting. I, I must say, from my own experience, as you know, I've got a media background, and uh, you know, a couple of years ago, I I decided, you know, I'll send my designs off to a a printing company, and they came back with all sorts of these weird and wonderful specifications. You know, flat. You need to flatten the design. I mean, it's, it was it's an image on a computer, isn't it? You know, how do I, you know, I'm going to get the iron out on it? You know, it was all of this sort of stuff. And although I have dealt with print in the past, I I decided that it was time to enlist your good self in helping me with some of that stuff. So I can I can attest to having you sort all of these minor problems out is is a great. Thanks very much. <laughs> so yes. Oh dear me, dear me. Um. So uh, just kind of a couple of last questions before I wrap up. Um. You know, people talk about you know the, the getting the the colours of designs right and things like that uh, you know are there are there any sort of design hard no's that you would say uh, you know that's not going to work to people or anything like that um no i think it, it has to be down to somebody's uh, to individual choice and uh different people I, I, i've printed many things in the in the past where i've, I've thought mm, it's not my style but you know it is their style, and I think that's the thing is that uh, as long as it's it's person that's having it done and having it produced, as long as when they receive it that they're happy with it, then that is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. There are um, there are tougher colours to print, and one of them is dark blue, which is uh, very very difficult to dry. But uh, but you see plenty of dark blues. I put it in my logo behind me, you know. So I wouldn't particularly put anybody off. Um, the only thing with with colours is is that um, when you see something on the screen, uh, to, on a computer screen, it is done with uh, red, green, blue, RGB, that uh, three colours. So that um, which is fine. And when you print something off on your office computer, that is also printed in three colours RGB. When we print professionally, that uh, or that uh, we go across at uh, four colours. It's called a four colour process, and it's CMYK, which is at uh, cyan, yellow, magenta, and black. So that uh, so so sometimes when so we see something on the screen and it gets professionally printed, there can be a difference in the colour. But ours is is truer to the it should be truer to what what it actually that uh, is. And uh, and sometimes colours can look a little different depending on the substrate that you're actually printing on. Um, you can print on a on a letterhead, which is which is quite an absorbent material. Mm -hmm. Or then you can print on a on a on a leaflet like this, which is a bit more silkier. Or you're printing on something like the like the banner here. So sometimes colours can vary a little bit in that situation as well. Is is there anything we can do in order to try and get the colour as true as possible? Is that where working with a, des a professional designer will help? Yeah, yeah. That uh, it, that uh, so colour matching is is an important thing. That uh, but it it is it uh, there are always going to be just uh, um, slight tolerances. So what you want is to keep it as as near as you possibly can. I think I can get the blues and so that they as far as the the background and, and this different different materials. But hopefully 
they'll they'll be you know they'll they'll match up. Hmm. Okay, that, that's that's very interesting. Um, and my final question was just about branding. Um, you know, does it? I think first of all, you know, I think a lot of my clients come along and they're like, "I've been quoted five thousand pounds for a logo design," and I'm like, "Really?" You know, you know, my experience of this is you can go and get it done on a budget. You know, how important is logo design and getting all of this brand stuff to color right? You know, what's your experience? Yeah, but, uh, again, again, it would be down to the uh, partic- particular persons how much. Uh, importance that, that they put on that that uh, if they're starting a business anybody's starting a business that uh, it is an extremely personal um, uh, thing to them you know it's, it's extremely important I'm very much wedded to my business like you are to yours so you know how our business looks and how it's portrayed is an important thing to uh, to me and that is so I do think about how what the branding is like what uh, how it's portrayed how it comes across so that um, um, yes yeah, so, I would say to somebody, if they're setting up a business, spend time, spend time on thinking about uh, how you want your your business to look, and that, uh, and also about look. You don't have to spend thousands of pounds, but a couple of hundred pounds um, when you're setting up. It, it, I think it's a good investment because you're going to get something that you're really wedded to, and you feel you know that uh, you can really get behind, and you're happy to promote. Mm. That's interesting. Um, I just kind of finally to wrap us up. Are, are there any particular top tips you might have for anyone looking to produce some print? Any kind of I don't know industry secrets that you might have? Inter- yeah, that I can't tell uh, the secrets. That uh, what I would say <laughs> is that uh, it, what I would say if you if you're looking at something that uh, you want something done is 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 to to really think about what it is you want it to achieve. That um, oh, it is that uh, you could say. Have a business card, but uh, but like for 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 business cards, but uh, what I do is you can have a business card that uh, which works well on one side, but you always use the back as well. And that uh, and mine has a QR code. You can go on, get yourself a free sample pack. So you, what I'd say is make make it work as hard as it possibly can. So that uh, so that's that would be my advice. But also be mindful about how many you want to order the term um, because that uh, five thousand leaflets is a lot of leaflets, especially if you're just going to have them in your house. They are some excellent tips just to round us off on. So thank you very yes. much, Alistair, for for joining me. Um, yes, and I hope everyone's going to enjoy that. Thanks again, Alistair. No worries. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye bye.